countdown to kickoff continues from Minneapolis. One of the best scenes that you're going to find in the National Football League. Here's an interception. We've got 40 seconds. Three, two, go. They say banks are typically closed on Sundays. Not this one. Time to go cash that check. Boom! That is your ball game. My name's Adam Groney, assistant equipment manager here. Right now it's Saturday morning, we're just loading in. This is where we unpack, get the locker set up. So tomorrow morning when we come in, we just basically open up the doors and everything's ready to go. You want this back up, Andrew? Right now the team is in team meetings, different meetings, and then they'll have a walkthrough later this morning. So the equipment we have right now is basically everything that they don't need for practice or for a walkthrough. We'll have two loads today. Coming from our practice facility, TCO, there's a handful of teams that are right in their stadium, but we're not at our facility like some teams. So every game for us is a road game. What do you want to do with this? Just leave, a, leave it up on top there. Yep, just like that. This is Dalvin Cook, number four. These are X-Tech shoulder pads. X-Tech has been a brand that we have most of our guys in, but every guy gets to choose what style they want to be in. The helmet. Delvin has a precision fit, speed flex. Everything is scanned to their head. His gloves have his own brand on them. He's sent gloves before the season, and so then we just put a new pair out. Footwear, it's a molded TD bottom. We can't get this style cleat anymore, okay. so he rotates. What will happen when we wear out? Good question. Ready for tomorrow. Week 13 is all about my cause, my cleats, so player-driven initiatives. Players are allowed to pick a foundation that they're very fond of. It gives them an opportunity to kind of show off what they're passionate about. It's a really long process. It starts in about July. Players select their cause, and then they work with the equipment staff to start breaking them in. Once they are broken in, they go out to the artist to be customized to the player's specifications. That's really one of the key parts here. And then we can do an unboxing day. It's kind of like a surprise and delight for the players since they haven't seen their cleats. I just think coming from where I come from, the whole call is about feeding kids and teaching them the right way to eat at an early age. And everything about the whole situation just felt right to me. The big thing about My Cause My Cleats is the players actually wearing the cleats in game. So not only do the nonprofits get to be shown off on a national stage, they also receive those cleats to auction off for charity. They're able to raise great amounts of money. Dalvin has had some of his best games in our cleats, so we're very fortunate that he has chosen the Minnesota Vikings Foundation year over year. Touchdown, Dalvin Cook! Last week, we capped the Ovid at like 225. Yeah, yeah on I that think first that's week, the we message, did. You know, block. All right, cool. My name is Derek Keyes. I am the assistant director of performance. Got the other twisting deals over here. The other ones will slip off, so. Yeah, I'll take the other side. My skill set is, I guess I would say, unique. So I actually started with a communications background, and now that I'm in health and wellness, it makes me very good at what I do because I can relate to the players really well. <laughs> I'd like to say that I've never worked a day in my life because I've been around football. So they say I'm not a happy guy, I guess. He's lying. I smile all the time. My mentor in college, my old strength conditioning coach, was the guy who actually persuaded me to coach. And once I jumped on it, I never looked back. <laughs> We have a development group, which are our players that aren't active. We're getting the guys who potentially could play. We're working on their development from a training standpoint. Hey, I know a lot of you guys, especially some of the skill positions, you guys are doing a lot of work on the field, a lot of running. With that being in mind, new lift, new exercises. Today's just about laying down a good week, and then we can build it from here. Right now, because we've done two, three workouts already this week, we're just gonna work on our unilateral movements and our auxiliary lifts, band work, core exercises. We're gonna be doing like a rear foot elevator squat today, which is gonna be our primary lift. Hey, uh, so you and uh, Masezi, y'all with me, and y'all gonna do the active roster lift. 
I'm basically responsible for strength and conditioning, rehab, return to play. Football is a combat sport. Guys are physically putting their bodies on the line every week. So for us, it's how do we get these guys turned over quickly to be able to perform at their best. Whether you're a player or a coach, we all wear the same colors. We all walk out with that same emblem. We win together and we lose together. <laughs> Why can't be 20? Right now what we're doing is we're setting up the weight room where the Mondays live. We always prep by like a day ahead, a couple days ahead. And then afterwards, we'll set the bags up and everything to get ready for the game. Our bags have tags on them, so we'll have two for the hotel and then two for the stadium. We need four. We only have four. We have five. Basically, it's everything for our soft tissue work. So it'll be, you know, foam roll, golf balls, lacrosse balls. Our ultimate goal is to make sure that we're primed and ready for the game, but that we don't overstimulate them before the game. So we take our time, it's methodical. After that, they're rocking and rolling. My name is Greg Bostrom, Senior Director, Entertainment Marketing for the team. I oversee the game presentation on home games. I also am involved in the content processes and our lifestyle content. Good morning. Arthur Koo, star of the show right here. On game days, I'm responsible for making sure that all the moving parts come together for the entertainment that goes into a Vikings home game production. So this will be the spot for game days, but I get to sit next to the important people. We've got PA announcer, DJ, first and 10 line over here, audio crew right here, and then a co-executive producer who, who's more on the tech side right here. It looks like five truck cameras. And then can you verify that Skycam is coming out at 12? I cared about this team well before I ever worked for them. So when an opportunity opened up to do entertainment for my favorite football team, it, it truly was too good to be true. And I, I never take that for granted. There are only 32 people that sit in the chair. I get to sit in on game day. So I take a lot of pride in that work. And frankly, I know that there's 200 plus people in the production that are doing the same thing. Kind of our standard timing here, the team clearing the field 24 minutes prior to kickoff. Roach with the welcome PA. He'll talk about my cause, my cleats. One thing fans might find cool or surprising about my job is just the level of detail that goes into the pre-production and planning. 24 hours leading to the kickoff is when I get to start buttoning up all the, the last elements of game day. Usually staying up late, finalizing details, printing production formats in the wee hours of the morning heading home, getting a few hours of sleep, and then on to the stadium by about 6 a.m. And at that point, I'm really just a communicator. I'm communicating what the plan is for the day, why everybody's role is important, and what we're trying to accomplish. Truly, at any given time of the game day, down to the second, I should be able to tell you what's going on. You'll see on line 41 and 42, cleat cam. So this is a font look coming from Arthur. That's about it for page four. We can go to page five. When fans come to a game, we want them to have an experience. We know there's a football game that's gonna be played. That's the main reason people come. We want it to be so much more than that. We want you to feel something when you're at a game, feel like you're part of a community, feel like you are impacting what happens on the field. I'd say when I look around at all the different stadiums that I could be working with, I, I truly feel that US Bank Stadium is the best equipped for an incredible game to experience. Hey, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. How you doing? John Drum, general manager, ASM Global. We're the management company here at US Bank Stadium. It's a state-owned facility, and we operate it on behalf of the state. The overall stadium is over 1.75 million square feet. A lot of real estate to oversee and maintain. It's been a busy last 18 days for us. Cousins looks left, throws to the end zone, touchdown! <laughs> In addition to three Vikings home games, our first ever Thanksgiving night game here at US Bank Stadium, we've also played 21 high school football games. The championship games finished up late yesterday afternoon, and so now we're going from the high school kids that, that celebrated to the professionals that will be out here today. High school football actually uses a uh, wider crossbar. So last night we lowered the goalpost down, switched them out to the NFL style. And then we have nine man lines, two prep bowl logos, and the high school hash marks that have to be removed overnight. For static, obviously heating the building, the humidity is gonna be very low. We spray a surfactant on the field, which knocks the static off and allows the rubber to settle down and give us a nice clean look for game day. Structurally, some of the great things that we've got uh, are ETFE roof. So our whole south side is a clear plastic material that lets in an awful lot of natural light. So on a day like today in December, being able to be inside in comfortable conditions, enjoying a Vikings game day with natural light, it really gives us feeling like you're outside even though you don't need to be bundled up. It's basically a kind of a pillow. 
This is designed to withstand a 100 year snow event and to be able to shed that snow. But when the snow builds up and it breaks loose, it's noticeable in the building. There's a little bit of shake that goes on. Temperature outside right now is 11 degrees. It will continue to warm up throughout the day, but it's gonna be a chilly arrival when the doors open at 10 a.m. One of the things to make sure it's a great fan experience is to maintain a comfortable temperature inside and being a dome stadium, that's one of the major benefits of this venue. So we're gonna go ahead and check out the steam room. Okay, go ahead. We get upwards of 250 pounds of high pressure steam coming into the building. That steam is then converted over into our glycol system. We have five pumps here that actually take that glycol, pump it through the building into all of our air handler units. So we have a total of 53 air handler units, 30 of which just handle the bowl. On a day like today where it's really cool outside, really cold, we will heat the building to a certain point. As folks are coming in the building, we will actually allow the building to cool down and then the natural heat that people bring in and radiate during the game will then warm the building back up again. So we don't want to overheat the building because then when we get 66, 67,000 people in here, it's too warm. The field level right now is gonna be sitting around 66 and a half degrees all the way up to the catwalk, which would be about 71. So somewhere in there, we're about 67 and a half, which is exactly where we need to be. Let's go 50. 30 is a little light. 51, 51 sounds perfect. We're changing the size of the snowflakes now. So trying to find the right balance. This is max and this is too much snow, but you can see what they can do. There are 55 snow machines around the building. These machines here coming out of the air circulators is version two of the snow machines. So last year we installed 25 of them permanently up top. The trick was to look around here and be like, there's 66,000 people here. How many can we get snow on? I don't know that number, but it's a pretty good percentage of the stadium at this point. Every single home game at the at US Bank Stadium is fun and unique. I think for week 13 against the Jets, we're expecting a really good matchup. We're expecting fans to be hyped up and lively. And, and as always, the showtime sequence pregame is one of the main things fans can look forward to. This is the Skull Drum. So if, have you ever seen a hand carved wooden drum before? If not, let me introduce you to your first one. Joel here is the head of the Skull Line and his brother Jay is the lead drummer for the Skull Chant. I gotta get my pose. There's a hype about it, I'll tell you. There's something about having that adrenaline coming back at you. Do you have anything left for the game? Oh, I have plenty <laughs> left for the game. What changes is when you got all the fans here. Hopefully when we do our jobs really well, we can be part of the success on the field. We can have the crowd as energized as they need to be on a key third down. We can lead to a false start for the other team. But beyond that, we know we're impacting the lives of 66,000 people in the building every single game. Whether or not the team wins, people will remember how they feel on that day. And a lot of those are lifelong memories. I have lifelong memories sitting in the Metrodome with my dad and with my family. So I know the impact that we're making on people's lives. So here you go, here's the guys that actually make it all happen. Griff, you should show these guys the inside of the ship before it gets going here. Inside of the ship, we have 10 CO2 tanks. We have it rigged up, so smoke comes out of here. And then also, we have a dragon head which gets folded down. Once we get it out of here, we get on the field, we'll put that dragon head up, the eyes light up, and uh, yeah, it's quite a show. It takes about 20 people to get it down there. It's pretty heavy. My crew, we have about 40 guys. They work the snow machines up above and they'll do the ship and the rune stones. So once we do the intros, the players are out, we get the go, and it's about two minutes to get everything off. It's a tight window. I could literally talk for the rest of the day about things that can and have gone wrong on game days. Anything from a video failing, a live element, someone not being where they need to be at the time they need to be. Anything could go wrong, I've seen it all. The key is to be fluid and be ready to roll with the punches and know that even when things don't go perfect, the show must go on. Testing CO2 in the nostrils in three, two, one. 
lot of trial and error over time. My best story is the first time we rolled this ship out as our home opener in this building against our rival Packers. And I was the one queuing the team out of the tunnel. And I ran back to get the team. I said, go guys, go. They ran into the fog straight into the door, which I had not queued open. Freaking A. <laughs> so, yeah, don't tell anyone. <laughs> My name is Andy Canudis, and I'm the team photographer. The simplest form, I take photos, anything related to the Minnesota Vikings team. Game day action, that's the main thing I think people would see is the action shots from the field. But I also cover a lot of behind the scenes moments with the team. Appreciate it. Usually when I come in here, I like to get in before players start arriving. They might be coming in fairly soon. I typically will try and get some of our players that get featured on social media the most that fans want to see, so. That one's not quite framed, right? <laughs> this game against the Jets, there will be a lot of focus on player cleats. We will be taking photos of shoes pregame. That way our game day presentation team can use those photos in the stadium as well as our social media team can send them out. So these ones are really cool. As you see, there's a portrait of Harrison on here. So as I take these, I'm able to transfer these by just clicking a button. We have a photo editor. They're the ones who get that image, make it look nicer than it does out of the camera, put a design template on it, get it sent out on Twitter, Instagram, social media. Got Adam Thielen. And it's even better for our sponsorship people because he's carrying a box of caribou coffee. It's a sponsor of ours, so those are the shots that fans would like, but also our, our marketing people. In total, I'm at a home game, it's probably between 10 to 20,000 photos sometimes, which is a little much. When we come out, this first 10 minutes is like a buffer time, so we'll come and speak to the other guys, just holler at them and, and chop it up with them for a little bit. What up, baby? <clears throat> <laughs> That's the one thing about the NFL, it's a fraternity, it's a small group of guys, and there's a lot of other people that you know around the league, so we'll come and speak to the other guys, like former players that we know, before we get started with our own group of guys. All right, here we go, here we go. Let's go, jogging to the 30, jogging to the 30, jogging to the 30. Hey, excuse me right here, my boy, excuse me right here. We about to warm up. Whenever I warm the guys up, the first group is like 10, 12. They normally come around 10, 15-ish. I'll take the skill guys, receivers, DBs, running backs. It's probably gonna take us about 15 to 20 minutes, and after that, they'll break off into groups. Hey, let's jog it to the end zone, jog it to the end zone. I kind of treat those guys like it's almost track and field. You gotta have repeat spinnerability, so we're gonna take our time with the warm up, and then we'll get it going. I am Paul Allen, the play-by-play -play voice on the radio. And boom! I get down on the field at 10 a.m. Central for a noon kickoff. I do about a five, six minute pregame radio hit for the flagship K-Fan. Then I do about a one minute words eye view hit for Fox 9. Then after that, it's just standing on the sideline, chatting with players. About 45 minutes to 50 minutes before the game, that's when I'm on my binoculars memorizing the adversary's numbers and body types. That's a very, very important moment for me. For this Jets game, I'm already thinking about number one, Sauce Gardner. He's one of several corners, so what's his body look like? How does he move? Does he have a towel? Does he have cleats that are a different color? I know that I've prepared well enough for most things that are coming. If I'm hit with something during the game or I don't have something in front of me, the biggest key is to not freak out and just move past it. On a Sunday in Minneapolis, your 9-2 Vikings taking on the 7-4 New York Jets. The Minnesota Vikings are looking to sweep the AFC East. The gifts that, that God has given me to describe these games and still have a childlike exuberance at 56, it just it makes me smile every single time I'm in this building or I'm with this team on the road. It's week 13 of the NFL, and we are joining you today from Minneapolis. It is a critical matchup, the Vikings and the Jets. 11.33, we're about 30 minutes to kick off now. So trying to wrap up the last few timing things here with TV, and we'll be ready to roll. During the pregame window after gates are open, we've done all our rehearsals, we've had our pre-production meetings, we've communicated the plan. Once I get to my seat in the production booth, my formal role will be the show caller, so I'm announcing what's coming up next. Three, two, 
One, go fun three, showtime. Let's go. This is the main event. We came to shut it down. Wiping the tears away. This is the day I stand my ground. Go snow cube. While I'm trying to figure out. This is the way. Ten to live. Three, two, go. Never say never because you never know what's ahead of you. Under books so many years. Now it's hard to grip the schedule. Yeah. Send the team. Get him, bro. Head coach. Kevin O'Connell and our Minnesota Vikings! Coffee gets it through the game for sure. This is cup three, which is Kyle's play for me. And the adrenaline is crazy. It's after the game. The adrenaline crash, the coffee crash. On behalf of all of us, we welcome you to a Skull Champ Sunday. The pregame sequence is so integrated. There's so many people that are doing their job simultaneously for it to go off without a hitch. There's timing with TV. There's timing with NFL rules. When we do kick off on time with a thunderous applause from the crowd, and now the team gets to take over and do what they've been preparing for, there is always a feeling of a job well done. Kickoff song to kickoff. Great work, everybody. Let's go get a win. And 